Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. I bless the name of the Lord for this opportunity that he has given us during this season and time. And we thank God so much for the opportunity, this opportunity to just share the word with you wherever you are, back at home. And we thank God for technology. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the pastoral team and the church, the leadership, uh, for the opportunity that they have accorded me to share the word of God. And not many preachers would give you an opportunity to share, especially a young person, to share the word of God with the people. And not just the people within Rongai, but all over the world, wherever you're listening from. So I bless the name of the Lord. Uh, today we are going to share the word of God from the book of Matthew chapter 8 from 20 from verse 23 and we will be sharing on the theme be still it is an interesting experience that Jesus had with his disciples after he had performed many miracles he had come from healing the man who had suffered from leprosy and from many other diseases people who had you know who are demon possessed and here comes a time when God Jesus wants to cross over to the other side <clears throat> and I want us to read the word of the Lord from Matthew 8 from verse 23 the Bible says then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves wept over the boat but Jesus was sleeping the disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are going down. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word. There is power in your word. There is power that heals, that delivers, that restores, that gives hope. And Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. You're speaking to us and you're asking us to be still because, Lord, you're with us. And Lord, as you've promised that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, I pray that, Lord Jesus, you'll help me to share your word with clarity, and with the accuracy that Lord it deserves in Jesus name. We give you praise, we honor you, speak to us, open our inner eyes, that Lord we may hear that which Lord you've prepared for us tonight, this morning. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Now on to our text today. Um, Jesus comes from healing, performing many miracles, and behind him there is a lot of a lot of people are following him there is a crowd behind him and he tells them he looks at where he is going and this time around he decides he's not going to walk on the land but he's going to walk uh, to to go through the sea with the, with his disciples and he asks the rest of the crowd to use the land and he tells them let's go let's meet to the uh, you know the other side of the river and while on the boat they are now crossing and all over a sudden there comes a wave an angry wave storms i don't know how many of you have had an experience to be in an ocean where the waves are so much and they are threatening you know to sweep you over and at this point the disciples remember some of them were experts they were they had they were fishermen like peter's you know, some of them had experience going through the, 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 the ocean, the sea, you know, over the boat. And this time around, Jesus tells them, let's cross over to the other side, and he gets to the boat. Now, Jesus was tired. He went and rested. Now, from verse 18, the Bible says, when Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Fox have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no, nowhere 
to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their, their own dead. Now 23, where now our, our, our concentration is, is from, the Bible says, then he got into the boat and his, his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm up on the lake came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. The waves was too much to bear. And the disciples are here crying. And their master, who is Jesus, is sleeping. When I was praying and preparing this message, I was asking myself, how can you sleep in the midst of a storm? How can you sleep and you don't hear the activities that are happening around you? But I'm reminded Jesus in his human nature, he had to rest, to take some sleep. And his disciples, here they were crying that they were going to die. Now, when the boat started, um, the water started getting into the boat and the disciples thought they were dying, they remembered, wait, we have the master. Of the sea we've done we've seen jesus perform many miracles he has healed he has healed the the leprosy he had commanded demons to come out of people but we've never heard him you know save people from the angry wave from this situation now that they found themselves in and they say let's wait we they remember there is jesus and they went to him and tried to wake him up one thing I would like to remind us today is that sometimes we go through storms. We go through moments of fear, of doubts, and we, th we are thinking, I'm going to die. It is over. It's going to be over for me today. I'm, I don't think I'm going to survive anymore. But the disciples remembered, wait, there is a master of the sea. The master of the sea is in the boat. And they went and woke him up. The Bible says, Jesus, they went to Jesus, and Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are going down. They cried through prayer, and they said, Jesus, save us, we are going down. Now what follows after this? He, said, he replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up. Jesus woke up from the sleep, from where he was resting. And he asked his disciples, he told his disciples, why are you afraid? And I can hear the voice of the Lord asking us today, in our situations today. I don't know what kind of storm you're going through, but he's asking, why are you afraid? Can't you be still? Can't you see that I'm with you? Can't you see that the master of the sea is with you? Remember, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that God made the earth and the universe and he brought, he, he, when the world was void, when the world was void, he commanded all these things to come into place, including the waters. So he understands. He understands all the details. He understands how waves were going. And the question I want to ask you today, do you think Jesus was aware of the storms that he, he was going to encounter together with his disciples? You, you may say yes or no, but the answer is yes, because there's nothing that catches God by surprise. He understood that he was going to encounter. On the other hand, the devil knew that he got Jesus in the boat and the disciples, and he thought now, if there is a time I need to stop the gospel, it's now. I'm going to, to destroy both Jesus and the disciples. And now he's bringing a threatening situation. It's a matter of life and death. It is not a situation where the disciples could swim and say, now, let's kill him to They decided, they remembered that there is master of the sea in the boat. Sometimes you need to remember that you are not alone, that in that situation you are in, that God knew that it would come. You'd experience this storms before even it came. Jesus knew 
that you would experience the pain you're experiencing before it came. Jesus says, You of little faith, why are you afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. And today, Jesus has good news for you, and I came to bring this good news for you. Jesus is asking you, can you be silent? Can you be still and watch me do this? Before the, Jesus, the, before the disciples of Jesus knew him as the healer, as the deliverer, but now here comes a time where they see him as the God over the nature. He's has, he has power over the nature. He has power over the universe. Do you think your situation is too hard that God cannot come through for you? Have you come to that point where you think, God, I'm done. I have unruly children. My marriage is going into storms. It is going down and down. Jesus, I'm about to die. This disease is too much. Economic times, uh, I mean, these times are hard. We don't have money. I don't have finances to take my children to school. My business is doing so bad. God, are you still there? Do you still care for me? And he's telling you, be still and know that I'm God. Be still because I know what is happening. And what is happening now, the men were amazed when Jesus rebuked the storm. The Bible says that the men were astonished. They were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. What kind of man is this? What kind of man is this? When God shows up in our situations, he comes in a way that we don't expect. He speaks things that are not as though they are. He commands the waves. He commands the nature to respond to the voice of God, to his voice. And he says, be still. He commanded the waves and said, be still, be silent. And God is asking you today, you're making too much noise. Unongea sana, nyamaza. It is your time to listen. Now, the prayer that the disciples prayed, asking Jesus to save them, this prayer was filled with fear. It was a desperate prayer because they thought a death uh, sentence had been pronounced. They had come to the end of their life. But let me tell you, this was the beginning of the new dispensation that God was ushering them into, that Jesus was ushering them into. Because after this, what happens, when Jesus crosses over to the other side, we see a lot of miracles happening. And I'm telling you, in your situation, in that situation that you are in right now, Jesus is asking you to be patient and be still, make that prayer, continue praying and trust in him. Because the disciples trusted in him. They didn't trust in their skills. They didn't trust in the expertise that they had. Some of them, like I said, they must have known how to swim. But there is a time where you don't have to apply the skills and the knowledge that you have. But only call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. The disciples said, Jesus, save us. What kind of prayer are you praying today? or you're making noise and blaming the economy, blaming your family, blaming your husband, and you know, calling your children all sorts of names because you think they have failed you. You're saying, I've never seen a husband like you. I've never seen a wife like you. I've never thought that you, you turn to be a child. You know, the boy you are right now, I thought you'd be a good son, but things, but you're turning to be a different person that I didn't know you would. And Jesus is saying, be silent, be still, because I'm doing something new. This situation will not last into death. I can hear Jesus telling Martha and Mary, that I know you are crying because your brother Lazarus is sick. But you know what? His sickness will not result into death. 
And even in your situation today, as you're listening to me this morning, your situation will not last into tears. It will not last into sorrows. It will not last in pain. Because the master of the sea, the master of the universe is, is, is present. And he wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. He's about to cause you to cross to the other side. He's about to make you cross to the other side. When he says, get into the boat, because you are going to the other side, he's not second gazing. He's not trying to see if it can work or not. He's sure that he will get, we will, will all of us get to the other side. And in your situation, he's about to bring you to the other side of the river. He's about to get you to the other side of the ocean. Be still and know that he's God. Be silent. Stop complaining too much. Stop complaining. In, a mass, in as much as these disciples had a prayer of fear and a desperate prayer of pain, of doubt, of this moment that they thought they were going to die, this prayer again I see they are making a prayer of faith. I don't know in your pain, in your situation, what kind of prayer you're making. Their language had been filled with fear. It was a desperate prayer that they were making. I don't know what kind of prayer you're making. While you're waiting, while in that situation, what kind of prayer are you making to God? The disciples said, Jesus save us. And Jesus came through for them. He awoke. Sometimes when we know that we are within the will of God, we will be silent. We will not be afraid of things. I can see Peter in prison in the book of Acts. <laughs> the Bible says that when Peter was put in prison, when Herod thought that the gospel was going to be over and he wanted to stop the gospel of Christ from spreading all over, remember the night before, the day before he had executed James. Now he thought, Peter, you are next. And he gets Peter into prison. And the Bible says Peter was sleeping. He was sound sleeping amongst many soldiers. The Bible said, actually, as I was doing the calculations, there, were, there might have been 16 of them. But he was sleeping in between them. But while he was sleeping, the church was praying earnestly for Peter. One thing that I'm happy about Peter is that he was within the will of God. And church, when you're within the will of God, you will not be afraid of the economic times. You will not be afraid of the things that are happening around, of the noise that people are making. Why? Because you know the master is with me. I have the king of kings. The one who is on my side is greater than the one who is in the world. I don't care what Herod say, he says, but I, I know that God says, I, I have, he has the plans for me, plans to give me hope and plans to give me a future. And as the church was praying, Peter came out of prison. The angel of the Lord came and asked him, Peter, Van Guo. <laughs> Imagine Peter was sound asleep and he was without clothes. Because Jesus, the angel of the Lord tells him, Va, va viatu, Van Guo, I want you to come out. And Jesus is asking you today, trust in me will you trust in me in your situation will you count on me in your situation in your pain in that sickness in your situation in your business will you trust in me will you trust in me to come through for your husband for your wife will you trust me will you count me in your situation can you acknowledge my presence i'm here to save you i'm here to set you free when Jesus saved the disciples, they were astonished. And they said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds obey him. And I want to tell you that there is nothing that God cannot do. There is nothing impossible with God. What, God, what you cannot do, God is able to do. Once you've reached your end and you think, I'm done, that is where God begins to work things out. That is where God begins to turn things around. And I want to tell you this day that God is turning things around for your good. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it around for your good today. In the name of Jesus, 
I want you to believe together with me as I pray. And I want you to believe that there is no situation. There is no mountain that is too tall that God cannot bring down. There is no sickness that is too tough that God cannot heal. There is no situation that is too tough that God cannot bring to a standstill. If he commanded the storms to come to a standstill, he's able. He's able. I'm reminded of these songs that says, Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all we could ask, all things according to the power that works within me. God is able to do that what he says he will do. He is going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He is able. I want you to know that God is able. You could be there and you're asking yourself, God, even in this situation, will I come out of it? But I want to tell you that God is about to take you to the other side where you will look back and smile and say, surely, if God had not been on my side, I would have perished. This must have been God. I didn't bring myself out of this situation, but God. And when people ask you, how did you get out of this situation? You will tell them, I don't know, but God brought me out of this situation. I don't know what was happening, but what I know today, I was blind, but now I can see. I didn't have a rent, but now I can pay all my rent. I didn't have a land, but today God has paid for me. I was sick, but now I'm healed. I don't know what happened, but God healed me. My business was going down, but God came and saved me in the 11th hour. I want to tell you that your situation will not end in tears. It will not end in pain. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you this hour. We thank you, God, because your promises are true and amen. And that which, Lord, you said, you will surely do. In this situation that this woman is going through, in this situation that this man is going through, that this child is going through, Lord, come through for them and save them in Jesus' name. Lord, as they make that prayer and as they trust in you, I pray that Jesus, you will come through and save them. You will not disappoint them. Exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even imagine according to the power that is at work within us, Lord. Cause there to be a miracle in Jesus' name. I declare healing. I declare deliverance. I declare restoration. I declare financial breakthrough. Healing in that marriage. Healing in that family. In that sickness in our nation, Lord, come through. In the name of Jesus, you're the master of the sea. You understand our end from the beginning. And Lord, you will take us to the other side. And we believe that in your name, we are free. We are delivered. We are saved in your name. In the name of Jesus. You could be there and you're not saved. And you're saying, I've heard the word of the Lord. And in my situation, I cannot make it on my own. And you're saying, I want to invite Jesus in my life because I want healing. I want deliverance. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And today I've heard your word and I surrender my life to you. I know that my life is not my own. I want to entrust you with my life. I want to trust you with my destiny. Come and save me. Deliver me. Set me free. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I'm asking you to forgive me. I give you my life and I ask you to receive it. Save me, set me free, and may you secure my destiny. Save me and set me free. In your name I pray. If you pray that prayer wherever you are, 
go to the church that God will lead you. And for, for those two that are listening from Rongai, I want to invite you in Open House Church. Come and you'll be blessed. You'll hear a godly, uplifting music, spirit filled, and the word that you will receive will change, will transform your life. Invite your friend and come and fellowship with us every Sunday. God bless you so much for being with us today. May the Lord continue to do you good things. And if you're there again and you're willing to give to this ministry, please go ahead. The number that you will see down there, go ahead and send your tithes, your offerings to that number and any support that you want to support this ministry with. We have a church that we are still building. Please give it to the work of the Lord and you will not regret. As you give, God is causing you to cross to the other side of the river. God is causing you to cross to the other side that you desire to be, that he has promised you that he's taking you to. And so, if God has blessed you, why don't you go ahead and bless the work of the Lord, and the Lord will bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you, and may the Lord see you through. Amen.